Beginner Watercolor Supplies If you're a beginner and want to get into watercolor but don't know what supplies you'll need, where or how to begin, or if it's even a medium that you'll want to stick with, well, I've got some things you might want to hear. When I first started with watercolor, I wasn't sure if it was for me. I had heard all sorts of stories about it being one of the most unforgiving and difficult mediums to work with, and I'm here to tell you that it isn't. When it comes to basic beginner supplies, I have a rule that I live by. Quality over quantity. While I do buy quality supplies, I don't buy the most luxury options. If there's any chance you won't stick with watercolor, then it's not best to invest too deeply. But before you get too overwhelmed, let's go through a list of watercolor supplies. This list of watercolor supplies is by no means fast and hard rules that you have to live by as a beginner. These are just suggested supplies that I found helpful when I got started with watercolor. Basic supplies. A mechanical pencil. I always use a mechanical pencil to sketch my drawings because the graphite is soft, which makes the sketchy lines dark in appearance without having to press too hard. They also easily erase and are gone without a trace. The Papermate Clear Point mechanical pencils are my favorite. If you buy the starter kits, they usually come with extra graphite and replacement erasers. These are basic pencils that come inexpensively in multi packs. The brand is Ticonderoga. The graphite is HB2. I believe I found these at either Walmart or Target. A chunky pink eraser is great to have, for if you're hard on erasers, the one on the pencil won't last very long. I also love to store my drawing pencils in this antique Victorian pencil box. A kneaded eraser is great to have as well, but not totally necessary when you're just starting out. Paper! Watercolor paper is special. It's in a league all its own. But there are different grades and degrees of quality when it comes to paper. Don't be tempted to buy the cheapest, low-quality paper you can find, nor the most expensive. Using a Kansan 140-pound cold-pressed paper is a good, what I call, beginner paper. Kansan binds their paper in spiral notebooks or presses them into blocks with lots of pages to practice on at a pretty affordable price. You can choose to keep the pages in the booklet or you can tear them out. To make cards or by sewing several pages together to make signatures, you can create your own watercolor art journal as I've done here. Paints. Watercolor comes in several different forms. Tubes, cakes, pans, pencils, liquids, sticks, gouache, markers, water soluble and metallics. But let's not get too carried away with all the options. Tube or pan paints will work best for beginners. If you're just starting out, a good quality beginner set will do just fine. This is my Magello Mission Gold Professional Watercolor Set, which I'll be using in my future watercolor tutorials because the quality, color range, and the vibrancy of the colors. Watercolors come in many different forms, like this traveler's roll of watercolor pencils. This is by no means something a beginner needs to have, but these rolls are handy for rendering paintings outside of the studio. Or you can quickly sketch with the pencils and activate the paint later. The elastic bands are handy for stuffing in a few extra brushes that you think you might need when out in nature. Brushes. At any art supply store, you can get a package of a variety of different sizes. Just to get you started, no need to buy up all the pricey natural hair brushes. Two containers of clean water. One for rinsing the brush, the other for diluting paints. Paper towels. Towels are good for blotting excess water off your brush or testing a color you've mixed before committing to use it. A palette. A palette is used for mixing different colors. Palettes are designed with different shaped vessels for mixing paints. 
This one is porcelain and is designed to look like a rose. There are many different designs to choose from, including plastic ones. Non-stating surfaces such as porcelain, as an example, with plenty of spaces for mixing colors are ideal for mixing palettes. You can even use an old dinner plate. Just make sure the plate is white in color. A white surface will help while mixing colors to gauge whether you have the correct hue, tone, or tint. Watercolor tins. Watercolor tins can be outfitted with square plastic trays called pans. They can be either full size or half. Depending on the size of the pans, they will hold only a little bit of paint in each vessel. The compact size means they can go anywhere. The rose printed tin came from Amazon where you can find many fun funky prints. Or you can use an old Altoids container or vintage tins such as this Eagle brand one. The clear plastic tray was some old merchandise packaging that I repurposed, but you can utilize the plastic from blister pack gum packaging. Thanks so much for watching my video. I hope the information was beneficial. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so to keep up with my other creative adventures. Bye for now.